Okay, um, this is my 20th year in uh, teaching. And I don't care what kind of measuring stick you use, 20 years is a long time. Um, in my time in, in education, I've seen a lot of changes, a huge amount of, edu uh, of changes. And almost all of those have been driven by technology. Now, after 20 years of teaching, I think I can only confidently assert one thing, and that's that I'm a bad teacher. I always have been, I still am, and I always will be. Now, I can hear some snickers in the crowd, and I know that you're kind of thinking, well, if this guy wants to get himself fired, why does he do a TED Talk and stand up on stage and do it? And you're wondering why would I make such a claim up in front of everyone else. And the reason why is that I don't fit the definition of a teacher. I looked through a lot of sources, and the same definition that I could routinely find in all of the sources I looked through is that a teacher is someone who uh, imparts knowledge. And that's not me. It never has been. And you may say, well, you may see this as something that's problematic because they say that knowledge is, is power. But that's a quote that never sat well with me. And I never see that, I don't regard that as a true path to educational success. That definition is tied to a very traditional model of education, one that uh, uses as part of its practice recitation and memorization and cramming for tests. This is geared around a very efficient means of transmitting knowledge, and it's very much a one-way system. And uh, it was one that I never responded to. My own uh, start in education was not great. Uh, my first few years uh, as a student, um, I was given what was called provisional passes, where my parents were called in at the end of the year, and they had to decide whether I failed or was promoted to the next grade. In grade two, I was given a reading assessment where my reading level was rated at, was assessed at a non-reader level. At school, I was passive and I was not engaged in my own learning or my own growth. But at home, it was a totally different story. I experimented, I explored, and I constructed. I eventually did become an avid reader and I read encyclopedias and science magazines. I was a naturally active and curious learner. Even though I just barely managed to get into university, I graduated with high grades and awards. However, at that same time, I experienced some very significant failures and setbacks. Instead of giving up, uh, they seemed to make me more determined and stronger. It was as if I thrived on being told no. There's a growing body of research uh, in education that talks about the, uh, the importance of struggle in growing and learning. Uh, students who experience struggle while growing and learning become more uh, aware of the world around them. They, become, uh, they develop a better understanding of their strengths and weaknesses, and they also grow in self-esteem by struggling through this process. The education and business world uh, are more and more talking about the power of failure as a learning tool. Traditional education models regard failure as an end and a pitfall to be avoided. But when I reflect on my own experience, I think that my failures and struggles were actually the best path to educational success that I could have had. For many years now, educational researchers have been calling for a shift away from a traditional uh, model of education and one toward one, uh, to uh, what's called a student-centered approach. Now, the student-centered approach uh, involves uh, in drawing the children into discussions about their ideas and their questions and their understandings. And uh, through this process, they uh, become more uh, engaged and responsible for their own growth and learning. My teaching career, like my student career, didn't start out well. Uh, I wasn't uh, very uh, involved in, in the traditional uh, education model. I didn't enjoy it, and I was looking for a way out just about as soon as I got in. I had a bit of an awakening about five years into teaching, and I was working in a school for the deaf in England. Now, the children at this school were primarily sign language users, which meant that they didn't have access to information in many of the ways that we take for granted. Instead, their main way of accessing information was through someone else who could directly communicate with them through sign language. I became fascinated with this other world of education, and I quickly immersed myself in it. And for the first time, I felt like I had a strong sense of purpose that was twofold. The first one was one of advocate, where I was working with the students and helping them through an educational system that wasn't geared to them. And the second one was fostering empowerment, trying to help foster this idea of the students to think for themselves and for their learning, and of course, ultimately, for their futures. Now, for these students more than anyone else, this was not an option. This was a necessity. 
You don't come back from an awakening like that. From there, I went to my first IV school, and I was so grateful to find a framework that looked at the whole child. And it put them squarely center stage, and around them, it built a structure of learning that would serve them not just in what they're learning at that time, but for their, for their uh, futures as lifelong learners. The education and business world are often talking about new directions in education, the future of education. You may have heard it quoted that somewhere between 60 and 85 percent of the jobs that our children will have have not yet been invented. And technology itself has seemingly wiped out some of the aspects that, we, uh, that were at the cornerstone of traditional education. I know I myself, I, I don't memorize half the things that I would make an effort to um, in the past. And how many times have you said it or have you heard it that you just Google it if you're not sure or if you're trying to remember? Um, and for me, I think that that really underscores how technology is impacting the world of education. And Google themselves, the seeming fountain of knowledge in our age, uh, does not rate, uh, no, uh, doesn't rate knowledge at the top of their list of criteria for job candidates. They rate it at number five, and they call it expertise. And in their experience, they've actually found that uh, people with a high level of expertise are less likely to innovate and collaborate. The number four criteria is uh, ownership. People will take responsibilities in, and, uh, in problem solving. The number three criteria is humility. Someone who will accept criticism and, and engage in a process of making things better. The number two criteria is leadership, but not the way that we see it. It's two sides of one coin, being able to lead and follow as the situation dictates. But the number one criteria is uh, the ability to learn. That's what they rate as their highest uh, uh, quality in their candidates. And <clears throat> because they, like all of us, and maybe more than all of us, they know that what you know is changing. And it's changing at a more and more accelerated rate as we go. And for, for what that means for us is that we have to be able to uh, be flexible and respond to this change. And that's not what you know. That is how you know. Uh, I had a quote. Oh, thank you. I had a quote from Guy Claxton, and it's very lucky that it comes up here because it's long. And I'm sorry, but it's important. So I'm going to just sort of run through very fast. There was a, what I was talking about, struggle. You get it now, right? And the power of failure. And the student-centered approach, that's very good too. 85% of our jobs, Google's candidates, and here we get to Guy Claxton. He states that how we teach slowly shapes the way that young people respond to the unknown, to change, challenge, complexity, and uncertainty. Um, our teaching can steer children be to becoming more positive and confident and capable in the face of difficulty, or it can steer them toward becoming more timid, dogmatic, and insecure. And to me, this really underscores the need to be treating education as a training within a structure of learning and growing that's going to be serving the children now when they're learning uh, whatever it is that they are, they're focusing on as their topic, but also as part of a structure that's going to serve them long into the future, long after they've left the classroom. Now, no man better embodies the, uh, the idea of it's not not so important, uh, it's more important how you know than what you know, than Albert Einstein. And I was very happy to find a quote that I could work in uh, from him. He states that the value of an education is not the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned from textbooks. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is inert. And if not put into action, it does nothing. It is nothing. And that's why I reject this idea of me as a teacher, as someone who simply imparts knowledge. When I think about my own life experience and my growth, that didn't work for me. And when I think about the children that I'm serving, I don't think it'll work for them. I did find a good definition for teacher in Oxford, but funny enough, it wasn't for a person, it was for a, a situation. And the definition was to cause someone to learn or understand through experience or example. And you know what, that's, that's what I want to be. I want to work to be that cause. I want to be the type of person who accompanies children as they learn and they struggle and they fail. And I want to be the one who helps to point out where they need to grow and to help them overcome those obstacles. And the best thing about this is this is something that all of us can do. Because as parents and teachers, we're all lifelong learners and we all seek to empower our children. To me, I believe that 
working to empower others is the ultimate pursuit. And that is a pursuit that I've been happy to give up 20 years of my life to, to pursue. And I hope um, you understand that I'm happy to give up the next 20, or if not the rest of my life, to work to accomplish. Thank you. Thank you.